What's up, I'm Vin, and today I wanna to show how to use natural log to evaluate limits involving exponents. Now, for a question like this, we could, of course, just try plugging in right away, but the thought process here is that if I just plug zero in for our x's, I'm gonna wind up with one to the cosecant of zero. And if we're mindful here of the idea that cosecant of x is the same thing as one over sine x, and if you think about sine of zero is equal to zero, so one over zero is either going to plus or minus infinity. So either way, that's telling me that I have an indeterminate form. So when I have an indeterminate form, that means that I have to do something else to actually evaluate my limit. So for a moment, let's assume that the limit is equal to L. And this natural log process will, if we assume the limit exists and in the case it doesn't, this natural log process will still tell us the limit doesn't exist. So once I let the limit equal L, I'm gonna take the natural log of both sides and we'll have natural log of L equals, and we have the limit as X approaches zero of natural log, and we have one minus three X to the cosecant X. And just know here that this process is valid because the base one minus three X, if you think about the graph of one minus three X, it looks a Y intercept of one and a slope of negative three, that this graph is positive as long as x is less than a third. So in that immediate neighborhood of zero, I have a positive base. So I am allowed to take the natural log of something that has a positive base, because if I had a negative base, then this process wouldn't work. So from here, what we're gonna do is use the property of natural log, and we could bring this exponent out in front as a coefficient. So we'll have natural log of L equals the limit as x approaches zero, and the cosecant x will come out in front like this, and we have natural log of one minus three x. But now we could use that identity again, that we're technically multiplying this natural log expression by one over sine x. So now I could say that this is the limit as x approaches zero, and we have natural log of one minus three x over sine of x. And notice once again, if I plug in zero, I'm gonna have natural log of one, which is zero, divided by sine of zero, which is zero. So the idea is that since I have natural log of one over sine zero, equals zero over zero, this limit is still an indeterminate form, but now I could use L'Hopital's rule because my limit is in terms of a fraction. Now, depending on how rigorous the solution is, I'm not gonna write out the full explanation as to why we could use L'Hopital's rule, but uh, just know we are verifying in some form here that the limit is right now an indeterminate form. So now let's go ahead and we're gonna use L'Hopital's rule. So what I could say here is we could say that we have natural log, and let's just get that mark out of the way. We have natural log of L equals, by L'Hopital's rule, the limit as X approaches zero. And another thought process I'm gonna borrow here, anytime I have to take the derivative of natural log of a function, this is just gonna be F prime of X over F of X, the inside function. So this is the chain rule variant for natural log. So in the numerator, what I'm going to have is I'm going to have one over one minus three X, but then I just have to remember to put the derivative of the inside on top here. So the derivative of one minus three X is minus three. So that's the derivative of our numerator function and the derivative of sine X is cosine X. So from here, now we could evaluate this limit just by plugging in. We have natural log of L equals, we have negative three over one minus three times zero divided by cosine of zero. And if we work this out, we'll just give ourselves more space. We're gonna have natural log of L equals, well notice this equals negative three divided by one divided by one. So this just equals negative three. And if we exponentiate both sides, e to the natural log L, e and natural log cancel, the limit is equal to e to the negative third power or it's equal to one over e to the third. Now, if we wanna double check our answer, what we could do is we could just type in the original function one minus three x to the cosecant x power, but there is no cosecant button, so we're gonna write one over sine x. And if we graph this in standard form here, notice this is a little bit difficult to see, so we could zoom in a few times at the origin, since we're taking the limit as x approaches zero. And I'll zoom in once more, and notice right at zero, the, the function is undefined, but it looks like the curve is heading towards a specific place. So one thing I could do is I could hit second window and I could switch the table from auto to ask. And I'll clear out whatever values are here just so we could start from scratch. And if I type in values slightly bigger than zero, like 0.1 and then 0 0.01, 0 0.001, you can start to see the trend here of what's happening 
with our y values that they look like they're heading to 0 0.0498. And if I do a few more, you can see that it's heading to, to 0 0.0498. And if I do that on the left side as well, let's say I get really close to zero, but on the negative side, I punch in a bunch of zeros and a one, notice I'm heading to the same place. And now before we said our answer was one over e to the third. So if I wanna see how close is 0 0.0498 to one over e to the third, I just do one divided by e to the third power and we press enter here and notice 0 0.049, this eight would round this up to an eight. So that tells us that our answer does in fact check out. Okay, well this is going to conclude this video on evaluating limits with natural log. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. And if you've got any requests, just leave the topics you want me to cover in the comments section below. And thanks for watching.